Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial. By the end of this video, you'll be able to prove statements by contradiction using four really simple steps that work every time. The prerequisite knowledge required for this video is that you're able to work with numbers in a really general sense, so performing simple operations. You're able to work with algebraic expressions, so that includes manipulating and simplifying algebraic expressions and that you're able to understand different number types. For example, prime numbers, composite numbers, integers, and so on. And that you're comfortable expressing these number types in different ways. So let's crack on with the tutorial and let's understand what proof by contradiction is and why we use it to prove statements. Just like many of the other proofs that you will have seen at this level, such as proof by deduction, exhaustion, and counterexample. Proof by contradiction is just another technique used to prove statements. And it's used to prove statements that are very difficult to prove by just using the statements themselves. So here's an example of one of those types of statements. All numbers are positive. This would be a really difficult statement to prove or disprove by just using the statement alone. And that's because there are an infinite amount of positive numbers. So using this method of proof by contradiction, what we would do is use what's called a negation statement to prove or disprove the original statement. OK, so we're going to look more into negation statements shortly. But let's have a look at a negation statement that we could derive from this original statement. Here it is. So the original statement was that all numbers are positive and the negation is that there exists a number that is negative. Now we know of course that there exists many numbers that are negative, minus one, minus 20, minus a thousand and so on. But by just finding one instance of a negative number, we've used the negation to disprove the original statement really, really quickly much quicker than it would have taken us to disprove the statement if we had used the statement itself. Let's have a look at another example. Here's a statement, five times five is equal to 25. The negation of this statement is that five times five is not equal to 25. In this case, the negation is clearly not correct. Or in other words, there is no case where five times five is not equal to 25. And therefore, the negation statement is false. And therefore, the original statement can be proven. So we've just used these two examples to give you a general idea of how we use the negation statement in proof by contradiction. The method is to use the negation to prove or disprove the original statement. In proof by contradiction questions, they'll generally follow this format where you need to prove the original statement by working out that the negation isn't true or gives you a contradiction. So let's go ahead and look at the four simple steps that you need to use in order to prove statements by contradiction. So we've called it the knack method because it's just easier to remember, okay? So the first letter N stands for negation and the first thing you do is write the negation statement. And we're gonna look at how to write the negation statement for different types of statements shortly. The next step is to assume the negation statement that you've just written is true. The next step, C, is to perform calculations. Now, assuming that negation statement is true, we need to do some logical calculations with the assumptions. And the final step is the contradiction. So, Based on your calculations, you will come to a contradiction, which will then allow you to conclude the proof of your statement. Now, this is all going to make much more sense when we go through a couple of examples. However, based off of what I've seen students struggling with here, I'm going to focus on the negation statement, how to derive the negation statement. And as it's the first part of this method, it is in some sense the most important part. So let's have a look at some examples negation statements. Now what is the negation statement? 
Now, in most cases, it's just literally the opposite of the original statement. Or perhaps a better way to think about it, that it's a statement you could form that if it were true, it would actually negate or nullify the original statement. So looking at these examples, we're gonna see that the negation statement that we use isn't always just the exact opposite of the original statement. So we're gonna start off with a couple of easy examples and then we'll move on to some of those harder examples where it's not an exact opposite. Here the statement is that n is odd. Now the negation is that n is not odd. Of course, another way to express this is that n is even. Another statement is that the square root of 20 equals five. The negation would be that the square root of 20 does not equal five. Let's have a look at this one. All tall guys get girls. What do you think would be the negation of this statement? Well, an easy negation would be that no tall guys get girls, right? But if we remember from the earlier slide, the main reason for using the negation is to actually make our life easier. It's actually to make the proof much quicker. So if we go from saying that all tall guys get girls to the negation is that no tall guys get girls, then proving that no tall guys get girls is a lot harder than proving that there exists one tall guy that doesn't get girls, okay? And this would be a much more suitable negation statement in this case. So when you see the keyword all, an associated keyword for the negation should be that there exists, okay? And that's why I've highlighted these in bold for you, okay? Let's have a look at another example. No pigs eat mud. Well, a negation that you could use is that there exists one pig that eats mud. So notice how we're using the keyword, there exists one instance of something quite often for these negation statements. Looking at the last example, we have that if n squared is even, then n is even. The negation for this statement would be that if n squared is even, then there exists an n that is odd, okay? So we've used these examples to show you that, of course, you should be thinking about what a negation statement is, but this gives you a kind of more scientific way of coming up with a negation statement by using keywords such as if then, then there exists. None goes to there exists. All goes to there exists, okay? And do try practicing this with other examples in your textbooks. Okay, so now we hopefully understand how to form a negation statement. Let's go ahead and do examples to complete a proof by contradiction. So the first example asks us to prove by contradiction that if n squared is even, then n must be even. So using the NAC method, the first thing we need to do is write the negation statement. And from the previous slide, we saw that the negation statement would be that if n squared is even, then there exists an n that is odd. The next thing we need to do is write an assumption assuming that the negation is true. So we're going to assume that if n squared is even, then n is odd. For the next part, we need to perform some calculations based off of our assumption, okay? So based off of our assumption, well, we've assumed that n is odd, and therefore n can be written as equal to 2k plus one, where k is an integer. And as we have an expression for n, we can write an expression for n squared. Therefore, n squared is equal to 2k plus one multiplied by 2k plus one. If we multiply the brackets, this is equal to 4k squared plus 4k plus one. And we can factorize both of these terms to get that this is equal to two times by 2k squared plus 2k plus one. Now you often need to manipulate algebraic expressions in order to be able to make conclusions about what you found. Now looking at this, we have two multiplied by 2k squared plus 2k. Now 2k squared plus 2k can just be seen as some integer, right? So that's two multiplied by some integer plus one. And by our definition of an odd number, 
Well, that means that this term must be odd. n squared is odd. And this is where we come to our contradiction. Because if n squared is odd, this contradicts the assumption that we made here that n squared is even. And therefore, we cannot go with the negation. We must go with the original statement that therefore, if n squared is even, then n is even. Okay. Let's have a look at this example. Prove by contradiction that the square root of 2 is irrational. So the first thing we need to do is come up with a negation statement. Because we see the keyword is for the original statement, the natural negation that you could use is that the square root of 2 is not irrational. Another way to say that is that the square root of 2 is rational. So we're just going to use this negation. Okay. The next part, we need to assume the negation is true. So now we're going to assume that the square root of 2 is a rational number. Now, if the square root of 2 is a rational number, it means that the square root of 2 can be written as a fraction a over b, where a and b are integers, and a over b is a fraction in its simplest form. Now, the idea of it being in its simplest form does seem a little bit random at the moment, but what we do know is that any fraction can be written in its simplest form, okay? Now, as we've written that the square root of 2 is equal to a over b, let's do some logical calculations on this. So, what we could do is multiply both sides of the equation by b to get that the square root of 2 times b is equal to a, we could get rid of the square root by squaring both sides of the equation, giving us that 2b squared is equal to a squared. And if we look at this, we can see that a squared is equal to 2 multiplied by b squared. And since b is an integer, it means that b squared is an integer. Now, if a squared is equal to 2 times by an integer, it means that a squared must be even. And from the previous question, we learned that if a squared is even, then a would be even. And therefore we can write a as equal to 2n where n is an integer. So now we have an expression for a. We can substitute it into this equation to get the following, that 2b squared is equal to 2n all squared. Expanding the brackets on the right hand side, we get that 2b squared is equal to 4n squared. And if we divide both sides of the equation by two, we get that b squared is equal to 2n squared. So what does that tell us? Well, b squared is equal to 2 times by an integer, because n squared would be an integer. And that means that b squared is also even. And therefore, b is even. Now, this is where we come to the final part of this proof, the contradiction. Because by performing some calculations, assuming the negation was true, we found that actually A was even and B was even. But if A and B are both even, then A over B cannot be in its simplest form, as we assume to be true. This contradicts the negation statement, and therefore, we can conclude that the square root of two is irrational. So hopefully this tutorial gave you the tools you need to do proof by contradiction questions. Keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.